What is good everyone, welcome back. So today will be our actual first tutorial on how to create something. So we'll have a series of different objects that we're gonna create using Blender. And today's video will be learning on how to create a water bottle. It seems very simple, but this is just something for us to get in a groove and kind of understand the process of making a bit more complicated objects. So last week, or I believe it was two weeks ago, uh, I challenged you guys to make uh, some houses. So hopefully that went well and you're able to figure everything out. And if you have any questions, let me know down below. But for today's video, we'll be uh, uh, going through creating an object step by step. So first, uh, what I like to usually do is delete the cube. Okay, so once we delete the cube, let's uh, press the edit on top left. And then as you can see the gear right here, you press preferences. And then in the add-ons, type in image. Um, you should see this option, it should be unchecked for you. Uh, import, export, images as planes, right? All right, so now that we have the add-on enabled, let's actually figure out how to use this. So the way you do that is by simply pressing Shift A, and you can see image references. But before you actually import the image as reference, what I'd recommend is for you to pick a um, direction you want the image to import in just simply because, let me show you. So if I create a reference here and then use this, you can see that it's perfectly aligned. It's 90 in the x-axis and 180. But if I was just randomly looking around like this and I did the same thing, you could see that it turned into a very weird rotation. It's not a huge deal. You could always fix it just by doing this, resetting it. But at the same time, it just saves me time and it doesn't take too long to do. All right. So now that we have a reference, right, we have to actually start making the object because you can't just have a picture and then call it a day. So there's many ways you could do this, right? So, um, for example, you could make a plane, right? Like this good old plane. Uh, make sure we're in a uh, actual viewport shading. Um, and then go and edit mode, look at the vertices, and then just bevel them. Obviously, make sure shift because there's only vertices and it works. Same with also just selecting a circle and then making sure that there's a face. So the way you do that is selecting all the edges, pressing F creates that same thing. Um, more in depth about the actual face tool is, let me show you right here. So let's just say we were making some object and then we decided to cut this part of the face and then halfway through we were like oops uh let me change this back so the way you could do that is by selecting all the edges so all the vertices that are in the edge and then pressing f and then the face magically appears back um one other useful tool is so for example we want to remove these edges here are more simple shape what we do is we press X and instead of just deleting the edges we dissolve the edges and as you can see it turns back into the normal cube and I could use this face as one instead of having to select a bunch of edges all right so that was the face tool and you could use that to make a circle you could also do that by creating a cylinder and then simply just deleting the top part right like that and make sure whenever you're selecting vertices, uh, don't just do it like this because as you can see, it doesn't select the other part. So I usually just go into wireframe mode and just select all of it and then delete it that way. So now you can see that there's a circle, an orange circle outside your shape. And that's basically the origin of it, of your object. And you can reset that by right clicking, set origin, origin to geometry just saves you a lot of trouble later on because let's just say we want to rotate this oops it doesn't act how we want it to obviously you could use this to your advantage in some cases so um you can actually do a couple things with this is if you press um this pivot point and select 3d cursor you could have this as your point of movement so you can see right here that it moves around the origin of your actual 3d viewport instead of the object itself 
uh, change that back by about back center. There's another bunch of options you could also work with. Anyways, um, individual origin also works. Um, and then set it back to individual origins. Anyways, usually origin to geometry is a good idea just so you don't get any weird things. Anyways, so let's start. This is similar to how you would sculpt where you kind of start from the bottom and go up. There's ways of where you can do from top down. It doesn't really matter. Um, you could divide the parts individually. So you could work with the top, bottom, things of that sort. Um, but as long as you just have a process where you follow through and do the same thing over and over again, it just makes it easier because you worry more about figuring out how we make the object instead of how to start and how to go through the process. So now uh, we have our vertices. We're in, oh, see, I was not in wireframe mode, so I can select all of these. So wireframe mode. So first we make sure that's within the bound. So scale it down, right? So now it's uh, within the size. And then we do that. Uh, we start shaping it around um, the object. So we would extrude. And there's different ways of doing this. So you could uh, skip many steps and just go all the way here and then individually start adding loop cuts. So as you can see right here, like that just keep doing that over and over again which works and then you just do that over and over again what you can also do is go step by step it might be easier when you're just starting to work on this just because this saves you a lot of going back and forth so like that and then extruding it again making it smaller just keep doing that like so and right about there is a good stopping point for now all right so now if we look at the object it just looks weird i, I mean i wouldn't call this a water bottle at least um so to make this more real what we could do is by simply actually making the edges more smooth and what we do is just bevel them so from previous lessons, you learned that all you have to do is make um, is press Control B, right? Bevels the edges. You can control by how much. Uh, obviously, the more vertices, the more your computer has to suffer. But with things like props, it's usually a good idea to keep it down. But if it's the focus point of your render or your game, it's usually better to add as many vertices as you can. Um, so. Uh, we'll do about that much. That looks about good. And then same thing down here. So just making that bit. Yeah, I would say that's pretty good as well. And if it helps you just seeing the object itself, what I usually do is shade auto smooth. And it just shows me the object without the faces actually showing through. Just because... And I do that just because it's more accurate, so it's easier for me to visualize if I'm doing this right. And then, so let's just start going through this. Uh, same thing with this edge, smoothing it out just so it doesn't look weird. And uh, I'll do the same thing here, just a tiny bit. Nothing crazy, just, yeah, that should be good. So now that we got the bottom part, let's actually start working on the top. So. Um, the reason we have a very simple object here is just because what I like doing is starting simple and then adding more detail or more complexity as I go through. Or you could just make it complicated from the get-go. doesn't matter. It's just but based on preference. But um, for this tutorial, for the sake of it, I would say it's just easier to start simple and then go up. But anyways, so... Now let's make the middle part that actually connects the top and bottom. Uh, so the way we do that is by selecting the face, extruding it, and before we even move it up or down, we're just going to scale it down a tiny bit like that. So it actually 
matches with our reference. And then what I would do is uh, extrude it again. So the reason you do that is simply to create a difference between the different uh, faces. Um, you could do the same thing simply by pressing I and then extruding it. That works as well. But for example, now that you can't just press I and make it bigger, you would have to extrude here. So, and then make it bigger like this and then extrude it again, right? I just like extruding both times just because I don't have to think of different ways of doing it. It's the same thing um, and yeah. So now same process, we just, you know, we go into wireframe mode and just line these things up. And obviously in vertice mode it's easier to do it just because you can actually see where the object is going. And then this is the top part. We'll obviously work on it and make sure that's more refined. And then now just bevel this. So it looks more like a water bottle than anything. And then I would just scale it up a tiny bit here. Just so it lines up. Uh, move this up a tiny bit. And as you can see here, I press G twice and it moves the vertices along the edges like this. It's very useful, especially in this case. All right, so we just bevel these now, a little bit more of beveling, like so. And I would say for now, we have a pretty good water bottle. So um, this part's done. Let's also do the top part. So I would say probably a good idea to make this a bit sharper. Uh, not too sharp though. I would still maybe add a slight bit of beveling uh, like so or just All right, so now uh, let's actually make the oops. Let's now actually make the top um, What you could do with your references is either make a folder for them So a new collection and then just call it reference or whatever you want I'll just do refer our sake put it in there and then to clear out all your references I would just press the I icon right because you can always do um, pressing H but then you have to do alt H to revert it back and that would return everything unhidden and when you have a lot of things in your file it's just easier to do it this way because you could remove a specific folder but the object itself is actually not hidden you could still unhide it just by unhiding the folder. Anyways, um, so now let's work on the top part. So it's good to have reference for these kind of things. Again, just because the more reference, the more accurate your objects are. So for now, I could tell that this is definitely way too thick. So I'll just make it a tiny bit smaller, like so. And now what I'll do is create a hole on the top because we have to drink the water from somewhere, right? And we do that by pressing I and then simply just extruding this down. Now it does look too sharp for me, at least for my eyes. So I would grab these two edges and slightly bevel them, not too much. I'd say a tiny bit more maybe. And then, yeah, that would be good. Yep, looks a lot more natural. Um. And actually, I would say probably it needs more inwards. So <clears throat> select all the faces, right? Um, Alt. And then turn on proportional editing, scale, and then Shift Z because you only want it to go uh, closer. And make sure to turn the scale down so you don't end up turning the outside portion as well. And that looks a lot nicer. So this is a very simple version. Um, <clears throat> And you could actually be done with it the way it is right now. All right, so the simple version is done, which will satisfy most people's needs, I guess, when it comes to drinking water bottles. But if you ever want to get more complex, it's always a good idea to add another reference picture. It doesn't have to be actually in the image viewport. Uh, it could be just on the side or if you have a second monitor and then go from there. So for our example, I'll just show you on how you could add um, an image reference 
in one of these um, text box. All right, so the way you do that is it's, it's very difficult sometimes, but you basically go to the corner and you can see there's a kind of a crosshair there. And then you just hold and press down. So you can see a new window popped up. And the way you close that is by simply clicking this and moving it up. And you can see it overwrites the other one. But uh, in this case, we don't want to do that. And then what I like to do is just go into UV editor and just open up a picture. So let me go to the, the one I want to use as reference. And then you could obviously make this bigger. Let, let's just say if you want to mess less with the actual components of the scene, you just want to focus on making this more complicated. Um, so this is what we're going to use as reference to just make the top more complicated. So um, we'll first start from actually adding this part where you could drink the water from. So instead of having this, we're just going to um, unfortunately cut this up. And then make sure we cut this as well, just so there's no weird things going on. Cover this up and then extrude it again like this. And then similarly to the technique below here, what we do is we either press I just to make this smaller, extrude it, extrude it again, enlarge in it. Uh, oops, turn off proportional editing so that doesn't happen. And then we just uh, make it bigger like this or extrude it up I mean sorry and then extrude it one more time just so it meets yeah, kind of in the middle here and then what we do is we add the hole for the circle again and then extrude it down okay we also we want to make these edges more smoother and draw beat the bevel them like so all right, and then I would also level this a tiny bit. Okay, that looks a lot nicer. But yeah, anyways, um, so that's one thing you can add just to make it more complicated. Um, we can also add um, complexity to the object itself. So what we'll do is we'll add texture to this. But before we do that, I would say probably just so it's easier to reference off, what I would do is just lower this with proportional editing just so it's um, less smooth and also let me do this like that and yeah that should be a lot easier to work with okay so now we're gonna use some tools we've learned previously and some tools that we've learned today so first create a cube um, so let me do that real quick. Um, scale it down a bunch. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do is use a Boolean modifier to cut the holes into the object. What I would do here is um, just line it up with the object like so. And just see um, how much or how big you want this to be. So let's just say we only want this to cover the bottom of the rim. So... We also, um, it's important to make sure that since you could see the object is kind of spherical when it comes to the bottom of this, um, it's not going to cut all the areas the same. So you could see that it kind of cuts more into the bottom than the top. So you could either fix this by simply fixing the actual shape and making it more um, straight like this instead of it being spherical. Or you could um, do so by making some parts of the cube thicker. For our case, it's easier to do this. So we'll just stick with that. Um, and let me just fix this around and then rotate this a tiny bit. Um, so that looks good. It's not very important just because you're not gonna, you know, really notice the details super easily from far away. It's more just to, you know, sell it than anything. Um, especially for beginners, it's not very important. Anyways, so now that we've created the object, what we have to do is, you know, copy it over a bunch of times. Um, so you could do that by uh, either adding a curve and making an array or copying and pasting this a bunch of times. 
What I would usually recommend is to make the curve and not erase. But for our sake of learning new features, I'm just going to copy and paste this over a bunch of times. So what we're going to do is press. So first, let's go into top view. Um, select this into 3D cursor so that uh, navigates and works as our pivot point. And then what I would do is press Shift D R to start rotating it. And I'll select a degree amount like five, for example, right? Just so we want a lot of um, repetition. So then we press enter and the computer or blender counts as one motion. So whenever we press shift R, it's going to duplicate it and rotate it exactly five degrees. So if we hold this for long enough, it'll come back like this. And now we have a bunch of cubes intersecting inside the thing. So instead of going and individually selecting all of these, you can go into wireframe mode, um, select all of these, and then deselect the actual water bottle. Make sure that you have a, a selection, and then press Control J to combine all of these. So now it's considered one object. Now let's use Boolean modifier. So let's do it here, and then select the cubes as the object. So now you can see that it perfectly cuts into all of these. So if you ever get these weird faces, what I would usually do is just add a, a subsurface modifier and make sure it's above the actual Boolean because um, if you add it below it, it's gonna make it look very weird. So now you can see that it actually adds um, all of these cuts and actually makes it smoother and the whole object more realistic. Um, so now, Alt H to bring this back, and you could tweak with this. So, for example, you want it lower, you could do that. If you want it higher, you could do that. It's really up to you. Um, if you were to do anything, I would make sure it's origin to geometry, just so you could actually uh, tweak with it and not have weird side effects. But other than that, that's all of it for making sure that there's some detail added to the sides. So now let's hide this for now. Um, you could always apply the modifier by doing this. And that would mean that the changes are almost irreversible. You could obviously control Z, but if you go too far into the project, you're not going to be able to do that. Other than that, let's actually begin working on this small uh, handle. So um there's many ways of doing this like almost anything else in blender but to learn a new tool i'm going to teach you on how to do this by not simply just creating a plane and just you know modifying this and the way that we'll be doing that today is by making um uh, by using a curve and this will be our introduction to curves and in blender curves are basically um uh, let me show you. So curves are basically just uh, vertices connected to each other. And as you can see here, you can navigate through them and it changes the shape. And what's useful with curves is, um, so you could extrude these as you can see right here. So this will be what we're looking for. And also you can um, uh, add depth to it. So for example, if you're making wires or anything of that sort, this is very useful. And you could also use curves to control objects. So if we were to have a cube right here and add a curve um, modifier, as you can see, the object curves around um, the curve. And then you could add an array modifier right here, for example. And um, instead of fixed count, you do fit curve, as you can see, like so and it rotates around um, the curve. Anyways, so that's what we'll be using today to make the handle. And um, so let's add a path curve just so it's uh, easier to navigate with. And so we're gonna add a handle. So what I usually do is just align one side and move these two. So I'll move this one next to it and then bring this one over as well. All right, so let's just align these up like so. It doesn't have to be perfect since it's a real world object. And then subdivide this a tiny bit 
So then you can bring this out like this. And then all we have to do is just bring this up to the water bottle or like this and just push it in a bit more. And then we just extrude this and just try to mess around with this a tiny bit more just so it looks more like the real world object. All right, so now that we've done, um, we've tried aligning this. Um, so bring these two closer together. So what I would do is add another subdivision here just so it's easier to navigate with and bring this down below because you can see how it kind of curves upwards exponentially. So line these up and then bring this up like this. And then you could obviously mess around with this, stretch it out more. But in a sense, this is how you get the handle done with the curve. And also you could add depth to it if you'd like, just so it's um, it's a bit thicker, so it's not just the plane. And then, so for example, if you wanna actually convert this into an object, all you have to do is go into object, and then here convert, and then turn it into a mesh. So now this isn't a curve anymore, it's just an object like anything else would be. And if you'd like, you could actually uh, make this smaller like this and like that. So then you could see how it's done in the real world where it gets bigger as it goes up. Or for example, you could um, rotate this like this as well just to add a bit of uh, curvature to it. So it's similar to the actual water bottle. Like this. All right. Looks good. And then I would just slightly move it to the side, a tiny bit. And I think it's looking similar to what we have in a picture right here. And let me just lower this a slightly more. Yeah, that looks about right. Yep, and then same with this. All right, it's looking good. All right, so I will post a second video on actually texturing this object. And I just want to do that just so it's not too long because combined it's an, around an hour. And I just thought that would be too long for one video. So the video should be up at the same time as this one. Uh, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next video.